Good evening, everybody. And can you hear me? Yeah. So I'm proud to be here amongst this August gathering, all heavy hitters of the industry. And uh, as always, you've cornered me by putting me in the middle. Uh, so I'm going to make this session a little more interactive because that's what I found whenever I've done sessions before that people otherwise find it a monotonous dialogue. So probably get the audience more involved. We'll do that. We won't wait for the question and answer session in the end. But I have one question for you bef before we go ahead. How is the OTT industry doing? Nothing to complain, sir. Nothing to complain. So I'm just following up with my next question saying, how many hours of content have you produced in the last three months? I mean, individually, you can tell me you can't collectively may not be possible, but individually, what I'm trying to get at is how, trying to find out how much content is actually being generated, new original content is being generated. Has it slowed down or is it really speeding up? It's gone up. It's gone up, uh, I mean, like really a lot. I mean, uh, across languages. You can, can you hear it? Can you hear me? No. Is Mike? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's really uh, gone up a lot. In fact, uh, after uh, the third wave of whatever wave that was, uh, you know, no, that it's is just a surge that had yeah. happened, obviously. So after that, it's uh, it's just uh, upward trend. Uh, I mean, across languages, I'm not talking about only Hindi. Hindi, yeah. of course. Uh, I mean, the the uh, you know you can see you know there are no studios available, there are no directors available, there are no writers available. So they are <laughs> doing something unless they have gone to Himalayas for you know some sannyas etc. That doesn't look like. So, but the both kaam ho raha. Yeah, both achhi khabar hai, but that's good news. See, the thing is, uh, we have got. Can you can you hear her? Hello. So the thing is that we have gotten uh, the audiences addicted, and now we have to supply it to that addiction, right? So this is this is just going to go up even more. Okay. Good. That's that's very good news. I'm sure if there are content creators here, you'll be very happy to listen to this news that consumption is going up, and therefore the demand will be there, right? Uh, but what are the challenges? Obviously, there are challenges, right? Especially when it comes to subscription. So what are the challenges? Nikhil? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think the first uh, and most important thing that, you know, I guess my, some of my fellow panelists will agree is uh, how do we find, uh, continuously find great stories, right? Uh, <clears throat> the kind of stories that our consumers are asking for and demanding uh, because they're not only exposed to content in their languages but multiple languages, India, abroad, uh, so demand for great uh, quality storytelling has really improved. Uh, it's gone up. Uh, the second uh, uh, challenge for us is that yeah, even today, if you look at uh, the industry, uh, from a subscription point of view, this is still very early stages in the growth of the industry and uh, the, the overall universe of uh, paying audiences in the country is, is relatively small. And to encourage them to pay for content requires a lot of effort. Um, most people still, you know, more than being able to afford, uh, there is this sort of mentality that content should be available to me free of cost. Uh, so the intention to what uh, to pay for content is a challenge that we are sort of uh, grappling with regularly. Uh, I think with great storytelling, a good product, over time this uh, this challenge is something that we can overcome. In the last two years, has been really great in terms of the movement that we've seen on subscriptions. Uh, but I think it's a long way to go and uh, very, very early days. I'm just asking a follow-up question. And how sensitive is the price when it comes to subscription? It depends on how strong your content offering is. If you have a robust content offering, the, the, the sensitivity is not as high. Uh, I think the important piece is how do you continue to uh, you know, penetrate the market and get more and more people into this fold of uh, the SWOT business. Okay, so my next question, I mean, anybody can answer, right? Subscription is a challenge to a certain extent, okay? And I've also heard that when you increase the prices, then 
you see the thing and it's price sensitive, it's price sensitive. So what are your other streams of revenue? Uh, for particularly for Hotstar, there is of course subscription is big and we have a really robust uh, advertising stream. So our business currently has uh, a, a big volume of people watching content free of cost subsidized through advertising. Uh, and there's of course uh, subscription as well. Currently those are the two established models uh, on Hotstar and that sort of gives you some amount of comfort in being able to grow the business through more than one revenue line. Yeah. Uh, Ashish, again I'm asking from a, from a revenue perspective, most OTT players, 95 percent, I don't know the percentage, I may be wrong and you, you can correct me on that. Uh, majority of your ad revenue comes from programmatic. See, uh, uh, for us, uh, you know, I just add one more uh, revenue stream uh, as far as Sony Live is concerned. We are, we are also, uh, our content, the award content, the television content with the catch-up, that's available also on YouTube. So, uh, and of course, what you are asking, you know, is more applicable there. Of course, in Sony Live also, there is a, uh, uh, you know, like for instance, uh, uh, shows like Shark Tank, last year we launched, and you know, it did well on TV, it did supremely well on so, you know, constantly things are changing. I mean, as the habits are changing, people are also f figuring out, do I have to watch it like a, uh, the conventional appointment viewing, or can I watch it together as a pinch? So, uh, you know, I can tell you about uh, Shark Tank. There were a lot of people who, uh, my son actually, you know, they used to have these binge parties. You know, they, should, uh, they would get together five, seven friends and watch seven, eight episodes together. So, things are changing, habits are changing. It takes some time for people to, you know, come to this, uh, as he rightly said, that the subscription is, is tough currently, but it's not that it's not growing, it's growing. It takes some time. I think we are in a very early stages of, uh, you know, evolution as far as OTT is concerned in India. There is four, five years maybe, uh, slightly more. Uh, and we are just the youngest one, we are just two years old, not even two years old actually. So, so yeah. yeah, no, fair enough. So, uh, taking from your question itself, when you do content decision, right, I mean, how much of it is only OTT and how much of it you look at television plus OTT? Uh, complex question. Actually, uh, I, and this is my personal views, so I'm not, uh, I believe that, you know, whatever content that you're making, you should be true to what you're, who you're making for and what you're making. So, if, let's say if I make a television content, uh, because I also take care of that piece, uh, then I'm very focused that it has to be television. When we are uh, considering a content for OTT, then it has to be, if it travels on other medium, that's a bonus. But uh, one should never do that is what I feel. If you're making, because you know, these are two uh, very, very distinct, they look similar, but they are not. So, yeah. you know, they're two distinct uh, set of people, who are, mindset of people who are watching those, that content. So, I believe that if you're making television, it should totally be television. You know, whatever you get on uh, digital is a, is a bonus, it's a plus, uh, and vice versa. So, uh, I don't think we generally take any decision like, you know, this is good OTT and it will also travel, uh, you know, and vice versa. But do you strategically decide that there could be the, be the show that can travel both, that can straddle both? That I think is, uh, you know, uh, how many? I'm just trying to see from broadcaster's point of view, because there is an opportunity. Like, because one of the things in broadcasting is that you are not able to get better quality content, especially in GC channels, because you can't take your cost higher. But if you can identify shows that can straddle both, then there is an opportunity, right? I mean, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, again, sorry to get that example again, but, you know, Shark Tank is a show that we've been wanting to do for me and Danish for almost five years. Uh, and we were not able to do it because we only had television and it doesn't make any commercial sense to do it on television. The moment we had lived and we thought that, you know, we can monetize on both the platforms when we did it. In fact, it would have happened two years back, but pandemic happened and so it got two years delayed. But yeah, I mean, uh, you are right. I think. Uh, the investment in content, if you have better revenue streams, will of course get better. Uh, but that's only to, currently in my opinion, it's restricted only to the non-scripted. For scripted, I think we still have to figure out, a, um, there is not, I don't know a use case that I can quote, Fair say it. that you know, this was made for television and it traveled very well on, on digital. So, so yeah. Nimisha, uh, what kind of content do you look for when people, because one of the topic that I, they sent me a WhatsApp saying that, variety of content in India. Do you genuinely think in the OTT Indian content there's enough variety or there could be more? 
or yeah. is it more of the same? If crime is going, everybody wants to crack, go get onto the crime bandwagon. You know, it's it's following television in a pattern in many which ways. Ye chal gaya to sab log wohi karne lagge. So, do you think what is it that you, as a content uh, person sitting on the platform side, how do you differentiate content, or what do you look for? And that could be for anybody. See, right? you're absolutely right. I mean, there is more of the same, but we are also very, very new in, in the game, right? I mean, the, the whole OTT ecosystem is fairly young, so sometimes I feel that we should cut it some slack, you know? We are still learning this storytelling, right? And uh, increasingly, yes, you, I mean, you can already see, you can already see non-crime dramas coming out, you can see uh, comedy shows coming out now, and uh, going ahead, 100%, because what we, for all OTT players, love to talk about is uh, the paste clusters, which basically means that there is an audience for every kind of content. And unlike television, now it need not be the case that you need to have a majority of the section to be watching a certain kind of a show for you to make that show, right? I mean, you had to make that decision for a 9 p.m. slot that if only 10 people are watching versus 100 people are watching, you would definitely go for uh, what 100 people are watching because you can only make one show for that 9 p.m. slot. What OTT in that sense has done is that the choice of those 10 people are as important as the choice of those 100 people. Of course, then the question comes is that what is the right cost of making that content if you're making it only for 10 people and that's a separate conversation. But as far as variety is concerned, and hence giving uh, importance to, to you know, different tastes and audiences, and hence giving rise to diversity in a content slate. Uh, so absolutely, I mean, that's just the only way to be for the audiences and the platform, both, right, and the creators. That's good. Uh, you want to add? Yeah. I think right now we don't have a a sort of common denominator to measure content across uh, yeah, platforms. But if you look at, um, let's say, uh, the list that Ormax puts out every year in terms of, you know, what are the top 10 shows of each year. Uh, from just from the Hot Stars table, if you look at last year in 2021, uh, you have an animation series like Legend of Hanuman. You have a spy thriller like Special Ops. You have a crime drama like Arya. You have a relationship drama like Art of Love, a historical magnum opus like Empire, uh, a poignant love story like Grahan, or you know a comedy like OK Computer. So, you know it has been our endeavor to put out uh, uh, a lot of variety, and and that's the reason why some of these shows are popping. Uh, but to answer your question broadly, do you think that I mean do I think that we've done enough? Even at, uh, at our platform, no. It is it is early days. There's much more to explore, many more genres, to many more stories to sort of put out. Uh, but it has gotten better over time, where in the initial years, even for our writers' ecosystem outside, a lot of the reference points were the streaming shows that appeared in the US between 2013 and 15. That's what they grew up on watching. And when they used to think of stories, that's the reference that they had. And that reflected in the initial uh, content that appeared uh, here. I think what's happened now is people are developing their own authentic voice, and stories are getting much more local and uh, authentic Indian in nature. Uh, and the variety is also going up. Yeah, you mentioned the measurement system. I mean, why is it that all OTT players are not coming together? Because today, in reality, you really don't know which show is doing well and not doing well. It's what the each OTT player puts out tweets and put out things saying we are number one, we are number one. Every time a platform puts a show out, it's it's the most happening show on Mother Earth, right? But I'm just saying, but but from a but from a from a I'm looking at it from a platform point of view and monetization point of view. There is no matrix right now where actually somebody can come and put. Like you said, uh, Special Ops, right? It's a fantastic store, but no OTT player is actually selling impact. All, no OTT player is selling. And I see a huge opportunity there, whether it is, except for, even Google is not selling impact. But they have the numbers to show, right? They have the numbers to show. But everybody else, even if there are numbers, nobody's, I think, 
what is the industry doing? And I'm asking this question because I think it's going to come to bite you back if you don't evolve fast enough, right? Because advertising revenue beyond a point will only grow when you have measurement. So what is it that you're doing in terms of measurement to drive revenues? Yeah, you know, I, I think this can be a completely separate discussion as well, but my two bits on it. I think on the subscription side, when you have a direct-to-consumer relationship, there, there hasn't been an incentive to discuss numbers because what, what you want to do is put out content, yeah, you people, you, don't, yeah, you yeah. don't need to tell this. I think on the uh, advertising side is where this sort of uh, comes into play. Today, most people are operating out of their own sort of uh, wall gardens and, and, and holding their data quite uh, close to their heart. Uh, what will make them sort of come together with a common measurement system? Uh, at this stage, I don't have an answer, yeah. but I do agree with you there's an opportunity. So, Deepak, you've been keeping quiet, and you know, you know how Vela I am that in 15 days, there's a twi second time I'm chairing a session where Deepak is also there. So, uh, so, quick question to you. You know, on one side, we speak about one of the good things that has happened about OTT is it has democratized content to a large extent, and it has also democratized talent. A lot of fresh talent have got great opportunity. In spite of that, and I've been a little disconnected, the feedback I get, and probably that's why I'm asking you, and you having worked with almost all the people on this platform, uh, is there still this uh, mindset of having a big star in a, in a, in a show? Is, is that mindset still exists that we should have stars, we should have well-known faces, or do you, are platforms willing to look at content where they may not be big faces, but may be really good quality content? I think that it has to be a mix of both because uh, uh, viewers gravitate towards magnets like big stars and big setups and things like that. And you can't only, you can't churn out six of those in a year, so you have to have great other shows also. So what this web series business has done, it's given the opportunity of people who used to stand next to the hero and heroine, stellar roles now, and they've all proved that they are great actors themselves. So, but I mean, the other what, what we used to call character actors in... Yeah, but a contrary point of view, okay, because uh, majority of viewing that happens on, net, on, on OTT happens through word of mouth. Majority, yes, right? Sir. आपने शो देखा है हॉटस्टार पर अरे यार फैंटास्टिक शो है हम देखते हैं आपने नेटफ्लिक्स पे देखा है या सोनी पल पर देखा है जी फाइव पर देखा है दैट्स अ थिंग सो समवेयर इफ द शो इज गुड पीपल हैव गॉन एंड डिस्कवर्ड इट बट इफ यू ऑन द नो आई एम जस्ट कमिंग आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग आई एम जस्ट गिविंग अ पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू एंड देन यू कैन करेक्ट मी बिकॉज यू आर क्लोजर टू द वुड्स देन आई एम बट आई एम गिविंग इट फ्रॉम एन आउटसाइड परस्पेक्टिव बिकॉज ऑल द शोज दैट एटलीस्ट आई हैव वॉच एंड मोस्टली इंग्लिश शोज has been discovery and even today people tell you hey, you're sitting in a room and you say have you seen this show have you seen this show it's not the holdings and everything that may be good for creating you know uh, optics but the reality is everybody watches a show based on feedback and today with social media the feedback happens in seconds okay so if i can draw a parallel no i'm just saying so i can understand when you have a star saying because when you have a star it may drive subscription i'm just i'm just i'm just my viewpoint and you can correct me but beyond a point does that really translate into stickiness and the, does the cost justify that expense i'm just asking this question very I, I, i'll come back to what i was trying to say is that if you draw parallel with cinema there is great cinema being made which thrives on word of mouth because they don't have the initial Nee, nee, oh. nee, but there's a so difference. They, currently, series is in exactly the same. No, it is not. I'm, 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 I'm saying because there, there is a thing that you have to go to a theater. Get, but when you're sitting at home, you're flicking with a remote, right? If there's great content and somebody has told you about it, you won't make that effort. Cinema theater is slightly different. I'm just saying, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I'm just parking this thought and just parking this thought because somewhere. And I speak to people, right? And when I speak to people, I'm not in this business at this moment. But when I speak to people, that's one feedback that comes that still, and that's why I wanted to understand from you, uh, that there is this, still this inertia of being, we should have a big star. OTT has given us the space to actually okay. not do that. Okay, good. But 
you cannot discount a no, no, fair enough. magnetic personality course, pulling in his fan base. Of course. And again, I'm going back to my cinema allegory. The sleeper hits that used to happen yeah. were all word of mouth. True, was, true, true. There were no big stars in yeah, those. Yeah. So, I mean, if you take Amol Palekar and when he started off, Vidya Sina, it yeah. was word of mouth that go and see that film, man, it's so good. True. You know, it wasn't a Rajesh Khanna blockbuster with super hit music and, you know, right from the beginning. True. But to your point of uh, big stars, absolutely do help with that starter number, right? In, yeah. in sampling, right? But when, when you say about stickiness, which then actually in true sense becomes the metric of the success of that content piece. I mean, once, once the audience has started watching, they are done with that he or she is a superstar. Now they are involved in the story and the character. And if that is not able to hold, then it doesn't work. But similarly, when you do a content uh, or a story with non-stars, the challenge is then to get people to sample that piece of content in, in a in fairly the crowded uh, content ecosystem currently. But, but yes, I mean, for, for, for the first sampling, yes, but for a show to be a success, it takes a lot more than just a star. Okay. No, fair I enough. think if, if I may add to that, uh, let's take the example of what uh, some of us have done in the past. You look at a Rudra and you look at an Out of Love. You've got the numbers when an Ajay Devgan's there on a poster, but when they've sampled an Out of Love with a Rasika, you know that that content has been so good with a, if I can use the word, a, a newer star or a smaller digital star, or for that matter, criminal justice. The stickiness that they get with some of these smaller shows that sometimes could be higher than a bigger show, but for the most of the tentpole properties, I think still there is a certain kind of demand or a necessity to go for a bigger face. Fair enough. Uh, I mean, we yeah, uh, Abhik, uh, yeah, you've been very quiet. No, no, I've just been hearing it. So, uh, you know, if I can draw a parallel, because I am not from the OTT world, I'm not creating content, I'm a, I, I come from the advertising world. But if I can draw a parallel, that why brands also jump into getting a celebrity. I think there is a, there is a nice learning that we can get. While, you know, great creativity can always get you the cut through for a brand to succeed. But the, the way the brands get a celebrity, it's instant you know, cut through. Similarly, because there are so many different kinds of content and variety and regional and stuff like that, I think to get the initial sampling done and therefore get the word of mouth to propel further, that first level of cut through, I think, uh, uh, a big name to any kind of a content definitely helps. Uh, I actually have a slightly contrary view. Uh, you know, we uh, I don't have a used case uh, of big star, we've not used any big star, I mean, the yeah. so-called big star. Uh, and we've been reasonably successful. Yes. Only and only through content. And trust me, uh, I can't say, sir and yeah. Deepak sir has given no, us one scam, of our scam, I mean, we not have had, didn't have really big faces, but no. went on to become a... Biggest show, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know, I'm sure there are other big shows. Uh, but forget, that's, that's two years old. The sir is yeah. pre yeah. preparing for se season two. Uh, so I'm also trying to kind of forget that. You know, you can't just keep on uh, thinking about your success. Uh, but even after that, if you see most of our shows, uh, you know, uh, there is a show called Tupper that, you know, we had the uh, almost first time director, not first time director, but he's done some, uh, you know, art films and, uh, but of course not such a big show. Uh, with an, you know, very, uh, like not big producer, with almost, uh, you know, good actors and not, not big stars. It did very well, not only in India, but internationally it was very well received. So. Uh, what I, but that doesn't mean that, you know, if a star comes, yeah, yeah, no, that's no, not. I'm, I'm All I'm trying to say is that, you know, ultimately, so far, and things will change when we are in a dynamic space, uh, so far, I think the, the hero or the star of OTT is the writer and the creator, the showrunner. I don't think any uh, big star has capability as of now, uh, as Nimisha was saying, she's right, it may get initial numbers, but business-wise, I don't see anything. We have not seen any... Uh, such, I mean, I don't have a used case, so I can't even comment on that. But yeah, I mean... No, no, fair enough. You're still early stages. Yeah. But you said something very interesting. You said matrix, right? What's the matrix? How much of that show a person should have watched for you to evaluate it as a hit show? I'm just asking. See, whatever I'm doing today is just thinking aloud, right? So, because I've gone into shows, like yesterday I went into a show, and I will not name the show, I watched it, I had not even finished the first episode and I walked out, right? So when you say matrix, what should, how many, 
what percentage of an episode or how many episodes of a season how what is the metric that rate, actually so Pardon? there are multiple uh, yeah but i'm just trying to understand uh, what is that matrix which you would internally decide that this is okay it's a reasonably successful show so uh, two metrics one how many people really came to sample the show and the second one is out of the people who sampled how many went on to complete the entire series okay. it's like really as simple as that and when we go back to television days it's actually just the reach and time spent yeah. right uh, so it's pretty much the same now that metric like because we are still early days and we are each i mean not only the the ecosystem but each platform is also evolving with every show that we launch and we realize oh we can do better so maybe the benchmarks need to change oh we are doing better with this one so yes that is an evolving thing but overall that's the metric of sampling and the completion rate and that's what decides uh, whether there be another season i just want to go back season. to the earlier one also these uh, big stars moving into ott or at one time when we did kbc yeah, they did it, not want to come to tv it becomes an endorsement of that platform when mr bachan did agreed to do television yeah. it was people were aghast ki kya kar raha hai you know and now we've got actors interested in doing ott who are big heroes on Bol in bollywood Because movies are flopping yeah uh, no <laughs> and also <laughs> but deepak sir uh, i want to say what you are saying absolutely kbc we host now that so i mean fully with you the only uh, thing I, i want to say that you know the the star and the and uh, you know nothing uh, to say anything wrong about them but you know uh, when bachan sir did that uh, mr bachan did that in in 2000 on star you know he was fully committed to do that show there was nothing else that he was doing i mean do picture ke beech mein chalo main ott kar leta hu wo problem hai sir that 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 is the modus of let me tell you having been part of mr bachan's time star and journeys after that to salman khan and big boss but many of these stars initially did it out of compulsion not because of desire okay initially and then obviously they did it more because of the money because they would make more money on television than probably and guaranteed money not a friday up or down right so so i think that whole ecosystem changed but yeah i agree with you i mean i'm agreement with you that yes it endorses the platform and it definitely Uh, i'm in agreement with everybody that it brings in that initial uh, numbers uh, but uh, 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 you know what is also happening is uh, a lot of artists who were uh, i mean the stars who were reluctant to kind of sample or come to ott are now watching what ott has done to internationally to of stars course. there and they are now getting warmed up so i think the initial reluctance is slowly you know because they are also seeing that you know now films are there are a lot of direct to digital even films. writers abroad exactly. shonda rhimes for example was she was bigger i mean than any film writer that she was a she Absolutely. was a television writer right so so i think that will change and uh, i think things are changing i mean it will yeah. evolve as uh, all of us are saying we are just in the like uh, okay we've done our little bit of gapshap here and there but i'm sure there are many of you you won't get an august gathering like this where whatever toughest questions you have please ask them and i will prod them to answer so anybody who wants to ask any questions Don't ask for a meeting, ah. Huh? That's not allowed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my name is Peshwa Acharya. Uh, I've been kind of CMO last 25, 30 years. Now I am cousin boards of various companies, which are in some way related to marketing, advertising. I am basically board member. So a simple personal question from my side is that uh, why are we not seeing enough of regional ott platforms coming up the one which i know is fairly kind of large is a fellow who has done it in uh, bengal you know this uh, mohata they have said which ha which which is essentially done by the fellows who are basically big producers you know Vengadish and they are also whatever uh, related closely to the politicians everything there that's a different question <laughs> yeah but essentially because why i am saying this is if you see each of our markets here you know whether it's um, maharashtra maharashtra tamil nadu telugu these are all larger than many of the countries of europe or many of the countries internationally so i'm just asking from yeah actual... just uh, i just want to i think we need some clarification here because all these platforms as far as i know you show all regional content. yeah yeah we are they all show regional yeah. content yeah. so there's no reason because economically i'm not saying it 
may not be viable for somebody to come and do only one language no, uh, the, OTT platform. The, the thing which I'm asking is that when I was CMO of Reliance Retail, we had specialty stores as well as hypermarkets. So moment you have a specialty platform, you know, the whole uh, brand specialization... No, but, but I can with conviction tell you there are more audience watching it across these platforms than on an individual platform. Surely. That's I'm, by default. Yeah, I'm essentially asking a little bit of the future. Do you think there are opportunities? Now that's a question. I, I think the, the first opportunity, I to, I'm just trying to rephrase your question, is, is enough content being created in non-Hindi languages today on OTT original content? And I think the answer at this stage is not enough uh, for a person, let's say, who's, uh, who's, in, uh, uh, who's in Andhra. For him, a particular piece of a particular OTT platform will only become relevant if he's served enough content through the year. I think one of the mistakes in the initial stage uh, you know, most people have made is to think of their um, regional strategy sitting out of Mumbai that I've done two shows in Marathi, three in Bengali, one in Tamil, so that's my regional strategy, which is not a consumer-facing way of looking at it. For the consumer, they must get the same amount of volume that today someone sitting in uh, you know, UP or Gujarat or Delhi is in, in Hindi. Uh, and I think that is a catch-up game. Uh, most uh, platforms that I'm aware of uh, have a strong foray into regional content. I don't even like to call it regional because it's local language for, for, uh, for them. Uh, I would say in the next three to four years, there will be much more explosion in non-Hindi content than probably in Hindi content because those are markets where there's a lot of hunger for good quality content and they have been uh, underserved. Uh, some of us who also run uh, television channels have regional uh, channel content, but as far as original content is concerned, massive opportunity, I'm totally with you. Uh, whether it needs to be served through specialized OTTs or can the you know, general OTTs actually serve them. I feel the opportunities with the latter uh, because they already have the scale and the brand and the ability to invest in content. But if I can you know, uh, Z5 has uh, this very year, we have as solid a slate for Tamil and Telugu as we have for Hindi. Like as many originals starting this year. So, In fact, as producers, we cannot service the demand that regional networks have from studios today the kind of demand that we are seeing from their regional counterparts is so high that one is we face issues in terms of talent, uh, writing talent, directorial talent. The demand for regional content is extremely high this time, extremely high, and they're very focused on regional content. Now you need to be politically correct, especially there's a language uh, issue going on, say Indian national languages. Absolutely, I mean, we don't even call it regional, we call it, you know, Telugu content in Indian language. Uh, so Correct. We, we, we have stopped calling it regional. Yeah. There is nothing regional, right? Anyways, sir, uh, just two things. Uh, firstly, uh, just to correct you, in every language that I know of, there are uh, smaller players who are trying to do big. Uh, I mean, who are trying to kind of move up the ladder. Uh, in Punjabi, there is a OTT, uh, you know, two OTTs are there. In Telugu, there is a A, of course, we all know. So things, uh, I mean, even in Malayalam, there are a couple of them I know. Tamil, of course, uh, A has just launched. We all, the broadcasters like you know, Hotstar, Z5, and Sony Live, we all are kind of attempting. This year, uh, you know, we are going to have our specialized store uh, in Telugu and Tamil for sure, and hopefully uh, Malayalam as well. So everyone is focusing. Uh, I think what Nikhil has said, you know, Hindi is just, uh, you know, one part of the country. And, you know, these languages, there are rooted stories. And, uh, you know, the other thing is, uh, forget, uh, you know, uh, it's not an option. It's a compulsion that we have as ODD channels of players. Uh, the reason is, uh, you know, because content is increasingly becoming language agnostic. We have seen some of the Malayali films and content that we are putting on Sony Live, uh, you know, people are in Hindi are watching it as subtitle content. So if it's, it's just going to blast. In the next five years, I think it's, these are happy days for uh, all the OTD businesses. If you are on the board, you know, you should be very happy about, uh, you know, recommend them on. Okay. No, Ashish, you hit upon a very nice thing, huh? because actually content is becoming language agnostic, you know. We all sat here and watched Narcos, which was 60% or 65% in Spanish. And now I know people are watching Korean dramas and, you know, this is happening. Yeah. Even yeah. Turkish. Turkish. Turkish, actually, they, is, they call it Turkflix. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. There's a group of women I know from our industry who watch it religiously for whatever reason, I think they, uh, but they call it Turkflix. Anyway, quickly. Uh, yeah, I have one uh, quick question. This is Apneesh from Edelweiss. 
uh, my question is to Hotstar. So Hotstar has a different content strategy with uh, very high viewership from cricket. Now cricket uh, next bidding is happening. Uh, how important is sports for any OTT? This is not just for Hotstar, but uh, I can, you can start with Hotstar. And what would be the plan B in case uh, it doesn't happen? Uh, could you get back to that number quickly in case you don't win the rights again? I'll answer the first part of the question, which is how important sports is to any platform. And uh, I know Sony has sports, Amazon is launching sports as well. Hotstars, of course, had uh, cricket for a long time. Hoot has uh, sports. So uh, when we come to variety, uh, the earlier question on variety, one conversation is around the original content that we're putting out. But if you step back, uh, variety is across uh, you know, movies, original shows, you know, post-theatrical movies, sports, television shows, uh, you know, international content. And if you're able to provide that kind of variety to your consumers, that's, you know, true variety, it strengthens your proposition. So for any OTT, uh, the more variety of genres that you have, it only, you know, makes it uh, better and it's, it's, it's common, to, uh, common to everybody. Uh, and as far as entertainment is concerned, you know, Hotstar has a really, really strong and robust uh, uh, entertainment offering um, and the largest variety of content. Uh, on sports, you know, given the uh, sensitive nature of the bid, I, I, I can't comment at this stage. Uh, but I can talk about the fact that the entertainment lineup that we have and the, uh, the uh, everything that we have on the platform, which is already there, and the new stuff that's coming up, um, you know, is, is, is extremely exciting and something that we are looking forward to in a big way. There's a gentleman there, yeah. Yeah, hi, I am Naman Gupta from Ultra Media and Entertainment. Uh, so my question would be, you know, of course, OTD, the two big factors are, of course, uh, to go with either s -word, you know, a -word or hybrid, right? That's our main uh, goal whenever I think any platform uh, generally starts with, that's one thing. And the second part is, of course, pricing for Hotstar, there's bundled services for, you know, Prime, they are again bundled with their other service offerings as well. But when it comes to just say, Z5 for any Shimarumi or any other platform, the pricing strategy, again, get differs. So what's that one factor which, you know, works really well because the audience is the same. And I think we all keep talking about the numbers, say 60 million paid subscribers and all, but the, again, the centric part is not just the entertainment, but, you know, other industries as well, uh, be it in subscription, they are all focusing on that 60 million paid users who have the disposable income to spend on digital, uh, you know, apps. So just two questions, like your point of view on which model will work well in the future, uh, when already we have these giant OTT platforms already since I think 2.4 is something, the subscription number which already India has, right? So I think it may increase. Uh, so what model will work and how does the pricing strategy works when it's not bundled like Hotstar and when it's not bundled again like Prime? So yeah. You know, the question was so long, I think, while you read the end, I think we we'll <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll just divide No, just it. in a short, sure. yeah, make it. All right, your point of view on whether s -word will work, a -word will work, or hybrid will work. Okay. I think given the current understanding of the market and where we are, uh, a combination of a subscription-driven and a -word driven uh, OTT for most of us seems to be working quite well. I know it works well for Hotstar. And uh, you will continue to have people who are willing to pay a premium for premium quality content which they can watch without um, without the botheration of ads and there are other people for whom pricing is more the crucial aspect and they're okay to have uh, advertising in their content as long as the pricing can be kept low and if that's the demand of the consumer for you to be successful you have to create your model which is which serves the consu consumer best. As we speak today, these are uh, two different segments which have different demands. Uh, maybe, you know, three, four years later, the construct of the market may change as it has. Uh, four years ago, there was not as much belief that the subscription services in India could reach the level of scale that they have, but they have managed to, uh, and they will continue to grow. Uh, but I do see in the longer term, both in SWOT and AWOT play, and some other, you know, transactional models which 
are yet to be sort of uh, you know invented uh, and thought through and people are working on those there is a very interesting statistics which is actually not coming from any of the ott platforms but from a canter research so it says that you know i mean they did a, obviously a sample of a large size and all so around 62% of the indian audiences have told that they are okay to look at advertising in order to watch content so that should also drive some bit of a i mean it may change over a period of time as people get used to quality content but as of now in the current state of affairs it seems that people are okay to look at hybrid models where some bit of advertising is fine but i can still watch it nice one yeah excuse me uh, uh, i have a uh, question uh, yeah, yeah. can you can you hear me so uh, i have basically two questions one is the extension of what he was asking regarding the relationship between the let's say the uh, sports event and the uh, let's say the uh, popularization of a ott app this is one the second one is uh, uh, like some of these fantasy games has also come up right so uh, have you have you analyzed like why the engagement let's say especially on the ipl side while it is a long season this time around but the viewership seems to be like increasing so uh, does uh, these uh, what do you say fantasy games have a relationship between the uh, viewership being increased and the third one is uh, like you have a matrix to measure whether let's say uh, how popular your show is is there a metric for the customer also to see that this is the limited at least the uh, episode you should watch to get the uh, full view of yours like just to give an example like sony live uh, there was a tubbery we talked about i watched it personally and i left it in between and somehow i started it again and i got engaged and i felt that i should have uh, kind of watched it let's say so i i would be happy to kind of get an answer of these three uh, aspects okay I, I, i'll let me attempt the third uh, question if you if you know what are the kind of cues that we can provide to our consumers to say keep trying to watch a particular piece of content um, there are two or three one is if you've left a piece of content midway and you come back to the app again Uh, you will prominently be displayed a continue watching tab that tells you that you should catch on to the series uh, there are uh, recommendations that are made by the uh, the the engine itself to say this is something that you should watch even if you've left it midway there are notifications that we send uh, a lot of the ott players also have a top 5 or top 10 tray to indicate to you that this is something that's trending currently and even if you've not watched it in the first go if you haven't sampled it this is something that you should be uh, trying out so yes there are uh, sort of multiple cues that we, we we do offer to our consumers to say don't give up something halfway eventually of course the choice is with the consumer if they've liked it then they will come back and give it another try if it hasn't connected with them you know they they move on and then the engine tries to recommend something else to them which uh, which bases their watch history it seems like they will like it uh, on the engagement with fantasy games we, we don't have data of people who are watching and also playing the game so a bit difficult to uh, comment on that anybody else yeah Hi, i'm prachi from mx player i have a question so by can you hold the mic a little yeah. closer by default ott is considered as you know top of the funnel kind of a medium like brands would come on ott for getting more reach for more awareness but also over time we have seen that a uh, brands are coming for engagement they want into integration so we are kind of seeing traction at top of the funnel middle of the funnel do you think ott is progressing as a conversion like bottom of the funnel metric also so like can we give more incremental reach to say a facebook or google advertising so from a digital advertising point of view do you think ott is progressing to achieve the bottom of the funnel metrics like brands would come to actually you know have more installs more sales like go for it Okay, this is a very interesting question. Let me try to answer it first before the experts come into play, because I also face that challenge, right? So, of course, one like everybody says, there is no uniformity of metrics that has been yet established. As marketers and advertisers, we usually have a traditional notion of KPIs, which is reach and frequency. But I think one has to look at only beyond that, because here the entire segmentation of audiences that one could do, you know, and and measurability of impact is. is far granular and therefore far more sharper for a brand to 
go after. Uh, I also feel that you know um, uh, brands have to have to look at it in that OTT not just as a parallel to a, or an equivalent to a TV where you go because you have to build a stature. Because if you build, and, and the adage goes that a brand uh, only gets a stature once it starts advertising in TV. That and and therefore by default OTT is seen as an alternative to that. But it is far bigger than that because it is not just only that you are present, but you are you are you are you are actually serving basis lot of other interests, not just demographics and geography and stuff like that. So there is a far better granularity of measurement which is available in OTT. Yet it has not been the common metrics is yet to be found, and a lot of media companies are working towards it. But uh, I think it will it will give us better ROIs in the next few quarters, maybe. Okay, if there are no more questions, and I we have, have a question. question. Yeah, please. To all of you. Okay, so I was actually, before I came for, to meet you guys, I was generally, you know, brushing up something. Gamification seems to be a very interesting area which needs a lot of attention. So are, are we together, are you guys have very concerted plans towards how gamification, uh, gamification and not just of gamification content. of content, uh -huh. yes. Also gaming as a platform, because in India and like in globally, Gaming is a really, really growing industry, right? So, is there a is there a like regional content, like variety of content? Is there is there any kind of a you know thinking that is going on in terms of uh, games? I'll, yeah, I'll talk about uh, suddenly. So, uh, you know, uh, gamification of content, existing content. Actually, we're the ones. Uh, I think we were the first ones to start of you know something which is established and you create a game out of it. Um, this is KBC Play Along. So, this was the first time. You know, uh, four years, four seasons back, actually around five years back, when you know while watching uh, KBC, you could play uh, on your mobile, and that uh, in the first uh, time when we did, I think sometime in 2017, uh, it like really the engagement levels went up. Nice. Uh, there were a lot of uh, traction. At that point in time, we did it with uh, Geo, uh, Geo platforms, and then uh, later on after that, it was uh, you know Sonilev hosted it. It was co-shared actually with between Geo and Sonilev. And after that, last three seasons, we've kind of seen fantastic results of that. The thing is, uh, what I'm trying to tell you, you know, the content has to uh, be that kind of, uh, yeah, supportive of that. Even on Shark Tank, we did something like, you know, you guess whether the shark is get, going to get the investments or not. And, you know, there was a decent, uh, uh, you know, engagement on that as well. So uh, any content piece that uh, uh, enables itself to kind of create a game, I think it will work. I mean, it's, it's a nice. So uh, my question was actually, Exactly but that. gaming as a thing, I don't think this is the right platform to exactly. answer that yeah. question. Okay. Is there interactivity demand from networks today? The answer is yes. Yeah. But I think the question that all of us or some of the platforms have to answer is, do we have the technology or do you want to prioritize that over something else that they want to build right now is the question. Mm -hmm. the, the day will come when they will be ready for us to provide interactivity in our shows where a storyline could move basis, a request from a consumer that what if he doesn't kill him? And if he goes there, what will happen? Then there'll be another storyline built for it. But I think platforms and creators have to be at that same level where technology But lots of channels have done it uh, across yeah. the board. Even uh, in Colors, television we launched a live show, a live show where people could even watch their f photographs on television live, you know. And in <laughs> Star, uh, when KBC was launched, gamification was done with Airtel those days. And then we had a program called Kulja We Simpson. had the support of MTN. Kulja we Simpson, where you could get a car in prizes on... Uh, <laughs> on live on TV. So, you know, it has happened across the board. I think people have done it. But gaming, your second question, I don't think this is the right platform. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Kiran Srivastava from Molecule. And this question is for the uh, OTT platforms. Do you people have a cutoff time to decide uh, which content you will be going ahead with? Like you'll get many content every day, many scripts, many concepts. So as a OTT platform, do you have a cut off time? Yeah. Like, yeah, okay, within three months, we will show an interest in this or no, or within six months or one year. This is a really good work? question. And this is a question that came out in the last session that I hosted also, where people saying, fair enough, how long should we wait after we give you a we pitch to you? How long should we wait? What is that cut off? I think as a producer, let me answer that. I think all the platforms here, I've seen turnaround times as quick as seven days that they revert to you with a yes or a no. 
I don't think so. Any of the partners here have made you wait for six months or three months. In fact, some of them have their own internal rules that within five days they want to clear a pitch. I think they're extremely, so extremely answer. proactive. I just want uh, the platforms to endorse what you just said. <laughs> yeah? Is, is that correct? You, uh, the uh, the, the, the not hidden, not for hidden oh, yeah. statement in we, her question we, is we that you properly. guys don't get back to us in time and we have to wait a lot and uh, I think that's what the question is trying to imply. Uh, so there are two parts. Uh, when we're, we're working with uh, close partners like uh, Deepak and Samir, we have an existing equation and so those discussions and decisions are faster. Uh, but if someone who's not worked with the platform before were to pitch an idea, we have a portal in which those ideas can be uploaded safely with all the NDA protocols in place. Uh, and the internal benchmarking for our team is that between 45 and 60 days, we need to get back to that person with a yes or no. And uh, we make sure that every idea that comes to us, somebody from the team uh, is reading and re replying to that. Uh, are we able to deliver 100% consistency on that? Uh, during lockdown, we had, you know, that had suffered. Uh, but I think now we're trying to make sure that every idea that comes to us gets a fair viewing uh, and a reply between 45 and 60 days. Fair. I think similar for us as well, yeah, 45 to 60 days. So that's your thing. So you take 60 days as a benchmark, right? That's a, that's a good deal. Yeah. We are running out of time, so I'll only take one more question. Hi, I'm Balkrishna from Frenzy. Uh, I just had a very simple question. I guess uh, we have among the top five platforms, nothing less than 15 to 20,000 titles in all, in total, if I'm not mistaken. So is it a problem of the variety of content or is it a problem of discovery to the consumer? What would be the right, right aspect of it? And if it's a discovery issue, what would an OTD platform be open to an OTD aggregation as a play? Or would it be something like, um, uh, what would you do even at a particular OTT level which would help the user find out those library contents? Like this is, this is a, uh, if somebody seen Narcos, Profugus is something which is very equally good, right? That's, that's the point I wanted to just check on. I don't know. I mean, uh, I didn't quite get the question, but in any case, uh, my I question was more uh, engines that most of the platforms have, and they kind of uh, you know, uh, they suggest what else can you watch. Discovery, uh, in my opinion, I don't see. I mean, not that we've heard that uh, you know discovery has been a problem for viewers. Uh, as far as uh, variety is concerned, I think we are just uh, as we all have been saying, we are just in the beginning of the journey. I think a lot of content across genres. Uh, you know, uh, when we started off, uh, Nikhil was saying, you know, it was, you know, the reference point was Western shows, but now a lot of it is getting, uh, you know, localized. Uh, there are authentic, uh, you know, uh, cerebral content that's coming, which is very rooted in India, Indian uh, ethos. I think all that is happening, it is just the beginning. I think four or five years from now, I think we can, we'll be in a position to kind of have a plethora of content for people to choose. Uh, currently, it's beginning and everyone is experimenting, we're trying our best to kind of get differentiated content. All of us actually are trying. And uh, yeah, we, we're learning from each other's both success and failures. <laughs> okay, great. One uh, question from my side. Uh, how much attention is there now or is to docudrama, documentaries and short films? Uh, I think there's tremendous demand on docu-series okay. and what we call as the follow series these days, follow reality or something. Yeah. Uh, I think a lot of SWORDs have a focused demand in this space, especially in the young adult space okay. and in the crime, uh, true crime space. Okay. a lot of demand for that. Uh, so we are going to end now, but before we end, I'm going to ask each one of you, what are you looking for in the next one year from platforms? and what are the big shows coming from your stable and for the platforms I'm going to say what do you, what are you looking for in the next one year and what are the big shows coming from your stable. I'm giving you an opportunity to also pitch, you know nothing comes for free. Uh, we've got a few with all three of them which have not been announced so I won't be able to announce it but Namisha has just announced a new show of ours called The Broken News which stars Jaydeep Balawat, Sonali Pindre and Shreya Pratavkar. There's something with uh, Deepak and Nikhil that should get uh, launched next year. And we're looking forward towards the original with uh, Disney this year. 
Yeah, for us, actually, uh, two things. In Hindi, a uh, lot of also shows… Also, what change you would like to see in the industry? Oh, uh, variety. I think that was somewhere that got missed because the… Uh, Time from platforms. Okay. <laughs> Point noted. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, variety, uh, we are just, uh, you know, we are doing some crime, some fiction, some scripted series. I think non-scripted docudrama, I think he just said. I think there are a lot of genres that, yeah, you know, family. Uh, shows, comedy, I think Nimisha said outside when we were discussing. I think a lot of, uh, you know, these genres that get to be explored and I think that definitely is going to come out. From our side, uh, I think we are really very uh, uh, confident and uh, hopefully uh, we'll do good in the regional uh, launches that we'll, we are going to do in Tamil, Telugu and uh, by the end of the year even in Malayalam. So these three are big things from us. Uh, from uh, in the Hindi content space, a lot of shows that we did, uh, I mean, uh, did well for us in the last two years are coming back. So we have Maharani season two coming back, Scam season two coming back, Deepak sir is here. Uh, hopefully, sir, hi <laughs> Ganam. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Rocket Boys did very well for us last year. So the season two is uh, already made. It's in the last uh, stages of finalization. So that's going to come, uh, come up. Uh, we have a very uh, deep relationship with uh, TVF, a lot of their content, College Romance season, uh, the next season, uh, Good Luck, uh, all of the shows that have done well, all of them are coming this year. This is going to be the uh, a, a very exciting year for Sony Live. Uh, from starting from June, in fact, uh, there is one show called Dr. Aroda, I'm sure you've seen the, uh, it's a very, very different show, Intiaz uh, is show running his Intiaz Ali. So I think a lot of exciting content from now till, uh, till, uh, till March. Uh, we have a very exciting lineup. Every month there is something big. Yeah, I, I think where, you know, one of the big things that helps OTT is building franchises and that's how you grow your fan bases around franchises. So uh, we're coming back with uh, three of our top franchises, which is uh, Special Ops, Arya and Criminal Justice. Uh, so these three shows will see returning seasons. Uh, but one of the shows which I'm really excited about actually launches on 20th May, it's called Escape Life. I think it's one of the most relevant uh, and topical stories of this country, uh, of the times that we live in, uh, which is based in the world of uh, content creators and live streaming apps. Uh, and what does it mean to be a content creator? What does it mean to, uh, what happens when you know, the desire for fame becomes so strong that you, you know, cross the line? And uh, you, know, you should try and watch it. I think it's a, it's a great comment on all of us who are watching this content, all of the people who are creating that content. Uh, so that's just whatever, 10 days away uh, and uh, it, it should be exciting. So we just uh, launched our upcoming slate with uh, announcing 80 original titles across Hindi, Tamil, Telugu and Kannar. And uh, one show that I'm particularly very excited about right now, uh, which we just announced today that somebody spoke about, is this show called The Broken News which is our next uh, launch on Z5. And it essentially is um, a drama between two media houses and you know the ideological differences on news. Uh, and just then when we were talking about there being too much of crime and thriller, so this is you know uh, our step towards trying to do adding variety <laughs> into the mix. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's what we are very, very excited about right now. Yeah, so our journey at Applause for the last just under five years, we've delivered 35 shows, series, so that's a lot of content. We won the trust of our partners here. We have season twos and threes with many of you. Praise them a little more, you'll get season four and five. <laughs> so I, I think uh, the big ones with criminal justice will come soon. Avrodh will come very soon. Scam is on its way. Sorry for hopefully. I forgot that. And uh, here at Applause, we will continue to make, produce complete series <laughs> with cues and the meager data you all share. <laughs> <laughs> so no shows coming from my side, but uh, I just want to have enough time so that I don't have to go through the FOMO of not having watch a certain show that is coming online. I just need time. Yeah. So Samir. Uh, Ashish, Nikhil, Nimisha, uh, Deepak and uh, Abhik, thank you so much. It was quite interesting for me. I learned a lot from this session. 
and I'm not on Deepak's side, but please give them a big applause.